Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to episode eight of Tech Talk here with Clint Swire. I'm Luke Dombrowski. And I'm Landon Eisenhower. And <laughs> just a reminder, we are filmed in front of a live studio audience. Audience, let them hear you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we have hit the big time today. <laughs> but we are here to answer your questions that uh, we're going to do at the end of the show. But before we get to your questions, we're going to talk about CMTs or quick change flap disks. Now, flap disks are a topic that we've had at least once here on the show. We've mm -hmm. talked about our Titans, which are 5 8 11 hubbed flap disks, and we've talked about our regular SMTs. But Landon, what is the deal with these CMTs? Yeah, so today we're going to introduce another product that we're really excited about here at Clinkspore. Mm -hmm. um, it's called the CMT, as Luke said, and essentially what it is, it's just a quick change flap disk. And so the cool thing about this product is that it's a pro proprietary Clinkspore item, meaning that we hold the patent on it. We originally invented it. So um, why that's going to matter to the customer is that uh, we control the pricing. So there's not going to be a lot of competition out there. Um, and so since we're able to control the pricing, we can push the price down a little bit more. So that's going to be one of the advantages we talk about um, as the episode goes on. Um, and we'll get to more advantages other than that as well. So to kind of give you an introduction of what they look like and what they do, uh, we would like to show you a video right off the bat here. Let's go to the videotape. Clinkspore's Quick Change Flat Discs, also known as CMTs, are unique products that you can only find here at Clinkspore. If you need a flat disc that saves you time, money, and is easy to use, look no further. Compared to traditional flat discs, CMTs take only seconds to switch out. Simply affix the die cast backing plate to your angle grinder using a standard locking nut. Then the CMT loadings are locked into place with a quick turn of the wrist. No tools are necessary for this process. Once the backing plate is locked on, there is no need to change it again. In just seconds, you've changed out your disc and are ready to keep working. When a new grinding surface is needed or when grits need to be changed, twist the CMT off and put a new one on. The efficiency of using CMTs will increase production and reduce downtime when switching discs. Another benefit of using Clinkspore CMTs is the price point. You'll find that you are spending much less than you would on regular flat discs. If you're wanting to save money on your flat discs, then CMTs are the right choice for you. Additionally, what you will see with CMTs is the versatility of applications. Clinkspore offers several different options for CMTs. We have a coated version for removing material and a non-woven version for polishing. In addition, CMTs come flat to cover larger flat surface areas or convex to contour complex shaped surfaces. We offer a variety of different grains including fine, medium, and coarse. Whatever the purpose, CMTs will help you get the job done. Lastly, the CMT is a proprietary item of Clinkspore, which means you will not find this unique product anywhere else. We oversee manufacturing, quality control, and shipping. With complete control over this entire process, we can ensure that our quality standard is always met. Choose Clingspore CMTs for high production settings, diverse applications in a job, and saving money. Man, that's a great video, man. All these videos that we, uh, we show on this show, fantastic. Took a lot of time. But let's go into, let's, let's go into a little depth on that video. What exactly are the CMTs used for? That's a good question. So. Uh, we get the question a lot just because the disc looks a little bit different. Um, they're gonna, people are going to think they're supposed to be used different. So that's not the truth. They're going to have basically the same exact application. And so nine times out of ten, it's going to be for aggressive, heavy removal. So okay. a lot of fab shops like to use them, whether you're removing welds or shaping metal, um, just removing heavy rust, anything like that. <laughs> so any kind of fab shop where they're using heavy, heavy removal, that's going to be kind of your go-to. But I do want to kind of touch on it. We do offer them in 80 and 120 grits, which is pretty high grit for a, for a flat disc. Okay. And we also offer them in non-woven, which we'll touch on here just a little bit. Um, so the application for those will t change just a little bit. So for the 80 and 120 grits, those are really common for people that like to blend. If they remove the weld and they're blending two surfaces together, something like that. And then when you get into the non-woven, that's mm -hmm. where you're going to start polishing. And that's especially going to be true on stainless steel and aluminum shops, things like that. So um, in summary, most of the time you're going to be heavy removal, higher grits you're going to be polishing and finishing. It's pretty much the same as a standard flat disc. Good, uh, good spectrum there. Some grinding, blending, polishing at all. Well, I'm, 
I'm enthralled by this. I'm very excited. Audience, uh, how about a live demo on how to put these things on? What do you say? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Let's go to, I want to see a demo here. Okay, so we're going to go step by step, um, kind of how to address putting these on here. Uh, so we have a couple of components. First, we'll need an angle grinder. We only offer these in four and a half inch. So if you have a seven or nine, this setup won't work. So just be sure you have the four and a half inch grinder. From there, you're gonna also need the locking nut that comes with the grinder. Every brand sends them with the grinder, so should mm -hmm. have it. And then the one stationary part that's gonna be with this setup is gonna be the CMT backing plate. And so what that, this is gonna go, the whole of the backing plate is gonna go straight over the threading. You're gonna put that there and that's where the locking nut's gonna come into place. So you're gonna get this locking nut, put it straight over the face of it and do not hand tighten this. This is where you wanna uh, get a wrench here and you want to tighten this as tight as you can possibly get it. Um, so if you make the mistake of hand tighten it, what it might do, it's going to allow this disc to spin whenever you're trying to change these discs on and off. So if you hand tighten it, it's probably going to spin. And so from there, you'll notice each of these discs have channels on the back. So you want to line those channels up with the knobs that are on the face of this grinder. You kind of just want to line them up, lock your grinder, you'll hear it click, and then you'll get them into place here. Let me see there. And pop it in. And so once these are popped in, you'll hear it click. That's when you're ready to go. And another sign, you'll see a triangle on the back of the disc and then a triangle on the backing plate. Those two triangles need to perfectly lined up together in order to be um, on successfully. So if they're not lined up, it means you shouldn't probably use it. So that's how you do it step by step. It's really easy to take it on and off. Um, so that's pretty much it. I mean, that's something anybody from an amateur to a professional, mm -hmm. I think, could accomplish. That's fantastic. <laughs> I mean, that's covering all bases. That didn't take you that long at all. I mean, that's under that's 30 the, seconds. That's the hardest part of it. So after you get the plate on, it's pretty much easy from there. So right there, changing them out, just no, the plate has to stay on there. The, not, the locking nut's not coming off, just changing your abrasive. That's right. Absolutely. So... We've got it on the tool. It's easy enough to put it on the tool. What exactly, what type of applications? Where, where am I actually going to use these discs in? Okay, so um, depending on the shop you have, we kind of cover all your bases there, whether it's lubricated or just a standard Zerk. Um, mm -hmm. So again, the first part we have, I do want to touch on again, is the backing plate. It's just a die cast piece of metal that you screw on, and that's going to act as the interior backing. So going back to the episode uh, when we talked about standard flat discs, they mm -hmm. all have either a plastic backing or a fiberglass backing. Since we're taking that out, we put for the quick change, we have just the metal plate. That's gonna act as the backing. And then from there, we have the discs. And the first one I'll talk about, Luke, is gonna be the CMT 726. Um, and essentially, it's just a alumina zirconia grain with a six degree angle. Um, so also referring back to that episode we did a few weeks back, if the more angle a flap disc has, the more aggressive it's going to be. Okay. Um, so this angle disc is going to be for your fab shops, 36, 40 grit, where they're, they're just removing welds and stuff all day long. So mm -hmm. looking for the most aggression possible, get the angled flap disc, which would be the 726. And so the, the cousin of this one would be the CMT 728, which you can see on the picture is going to be the flat version of the disc. Um, so again, referencing that last video, anything flat is more for blending and grinding on large flat surfaces. So it'd be good for something like uh, sheet metal shops or removing welds, um, removing rust, excuse me, removing rust on a large flat surface like the hood of a car. Okay. This one would be more efficient in removing that because it has a wider grinding area. So 728 more efficient for blending, finishing, things like that. Um, and then next we have the CMT 730 and you'll see it's green. Anything green from clean spore pretty much means it has the lubricant over the top green of, of the disc here. And so um, what that signals is that it's great for heat sensitive metals. And so by that, I'm really, I really mean stainless steel and aluminum. Okay. And so stainless steel, when it gets hot, it likes to turn a bluish color. And so if, if you allow that to happen, you're just going to add a step into the process. You're going to have to buff that out at some point. So to avoid that, that's where you want the 730, the lubricant. It's going to keep the temperature down around 20 percent um, and then you won't blow your stainless over and then on the other hand you've got aluminum which when it gets hot it kind of gets tacky um, and that stickiness will stick to the grain of the disc if you're not careful and at that point it's basically just spinning in place it's not going to remove any metal there so to avoid that from happening that lubricant um, will keep the temperature down the aluminum as well so 
very important. Any heat sensitive metal and that goes for brass or nickel, anything like that as well. It'd be the 730 would be your go-to disc. Um, and then lastly, we have the CMT 800 and it's basically just a non-woven disc. And we'll, you'll see on the picture here, we offer that in three different densities. Um, so each one kind of has a purpose as well. So you'll notice the course is a brownish color. Mm -hmm. It's just dense enough where it can be used for deburring properties, things like that. It's going to leave a pretty heavy scratch for a non-woven, but it's going to be able to remove and deburr a little bit as well. And okay. so that's going to be your course. Um, then the crowd favorite is pretty much going to be the medium, which you'll see here is the maroon or reddish color. That's going to be the happy medium between the coarse and the very fine there. So it's kind of going to leave a good scratch. Um, you can do minimal deburring, but it's also going to leave a really good finish, get you towards that satin finish. And that's the medium. Um, and then lastly, the blue disc we have here is going to be the very fine. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the very fine is, you're not going to be doing any deburring or anything like this with this disc. It's just for your pure finish and gotcha. blending stuff like that. So it's going to leave the, the shiniest finish. Um, and the least amount of scratches in it. So, and again, that's the very fine. So those are the three options um, of the non-woven that we have there. There we go. That, again, we've got the spectrum covered right there. We do. That's pretty good. We've got uh, a, a, just about all Zerk, you said, great for metal, things like that, and the non-woven for polishing and all. Right. So we've got, we've got the items. We've got to find out. You said earlier this is a specifically only for clean sport. We're the only people that are going to offer this. Give me some more advantages. The audience so the, needs to hear. <laughs> tell me, tell me the reasons why. Put the nail in the coffin for the somebody that's on the fence. What are the best advantages of these? All right, so, so for me, if I'm the one buying the disc, mm -hmm. the the one that's going to jump out of, right out of the gate is going to be the price point. Yeah. So if you compare the price of the clean sport CMT to any competitor of the standard flat disc, mm -hmm. it's going to be about a 25% drop. Okay. And again, that's just from us being able to control that market. We can basically charge um, bottom dollar for it, which we do. So you're going to save a lot of money right there. there so that's going to be the biggest one for me. So again, it's about a 25% drop off that you're going to see, which is huge. Um, and then the, awesome. the next one is just going to be the quick change feature. Um, so a lot of the metal shops we sell to, they get paid by what they get out the door, production shops, basically. So instead of fumbling with a disc and changing discs every 30, 45 minutes, we remove that concept. You can have disc on and off in a matter of two or three seconds. And so that's going to be the biggest one for me. That time does add up. It does. It does. Most of these guys work in eight to 12 hour shifts. Mm -hmm. Over the course of that, how many times they change in discs? You know? So that we avoid that. You can just change it on and off in a matter of seconds and be on your way. Okay. So that's the second big one. The third one for me is just the ease of, the ease of use. Um, so when I travel, I see customers, I'm working with them. I see they have a two grinder system. So over here, you'd have a 40 grit for mm -hmm. removal. And then on the other side of the table, you'd have like a 80 or 120, even a non-woven, depending on yeah. what they're doing. So they just go back and forth. So with this one, all you have to do, once you lock it, you're going to pop this off. And then if you want to finish, you'd line this back up with the non-woven and you're ready to go. So I changed it in a matter of, what was that? Like four seconds. Oh probably. yeah. So instead of jumping back and forth between grinders or buying an extra grinder and setting it up, um, you can just change to the CMT system and you'll have whatever disc you need on and off in just a matter of seconds. Easy to use. It's a time saver yeah. and it saves you money. I mean, audience, can you ask for anything more? No, absolutely not. So um, we do like to say that um, all of our sales reps, we have sales reps all over the country that are ready to come to you you just got to get in contact with them. All of our sales reps have sample kits of these CMTs yeah. in their cars, in their vehicles. Yes. There it is. And to get your hands on these, you need to get a hold of your sales reps. You can call Klingspore, look us up online, find out where your local sales rep is, and we can get a sample kit in your hands. So it is possible. This isn't something that is out of the reach of probability. But... Um, Absolutely. CMTs. I like it. Um, one aspect of this show that has grown lots of attention mm -hmm. is our question and answer. So it's time to move on. Let's get some questions. If you have any questions of your own, please send them in to techtalk at clingsport.com. We try to get them. We have them in here. Um, I don't think we're quite ready for this audience to give us live questions. I don't think anybody brought any today, but with the question and answers, let's go to you. Um, What's the purpose? Uh, the first one here are CMTs and SMTs more aggressive. So which one's more aggressive? Which one is? Okay, so it's really a matter of the grain. So if you compare a zirconia 
a SMT or standard flat disc to a Zirconia CMT, uh, you won't notice a difference. So it's really going to be on the user at that point, whether how much pressure they're using, what they're grinding on, things like that. But if you just across the board did the same for both SMT and CMT, mm -hmm. you wouldn't notice a difference. So the application wouldn't change and the, the aggression essentially wouldn't change either. So oh. pretty much interchangeable products that we have. Um, just one has a few more advantages, if you ask me. Okay, gotcha. Well. All right, so we did have one sent in to you as well, Luke. So the first one, I, like I think they probably saw one of your previous videos here. <laughs> Uh, it's, I have a backing pad that has holes in it. Do I need to have the same hole pattern on my discs? Well, uh, that's a great question. Um, the answer to this is it depends on if you're using some kind of vacuum system. Are you using some kind of a, a central vac, a self-generated vac? Is there some kind of uh, airflow going through there? Uh, if a backing pad has holes in it, that means you're using some kind of dust extraction system. Um, if you're not, if you're just if you just grabbed a backing pad, a lot of backing pads are interchangeable. If you just grabbed a backing pad that has holes in it, or if you're not worried about dust extraction, you can use a no hole disc. But we do here at Clean Sport have just about we have a numerous amount of hole patterns and mm -hmm. set aside. We can punch out any type of hole pattern almost out there and um, we can match up that whole pattern but it is not exactly vital so if you're not worried about dust extraction you don't have to put you can put a no hole disc on top of that hold backing pad so that's just it, it's solely on the preference of the user do you want dust extraction or not that's what the holes are there for but uh another question in uh we got zachary here for you landon mm -hmm. what is an average advantage to using CMTs over SMTs. We talked about some of those. Yeah, so, but. okay, yeah, I'll just hit it real quick again. Yeah. So my favorite one would be, obviously, the, the money savings you're going to get. Again, I said about 25%. Um, then just the quick change aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And then just the ease of use. As a user, if you're using this for the entire shift, which these metal shops do, okay. it would just be the ease of access on and off kind of thing. So between the three, just pick one. They're all great. Money, time, ease. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right, so we have another one for you, Luke. Um, Roger sent this one in. I'm doing a lot of sanding of wood and tearing my discs. Any suggestions to help? Okay, Roger, that sounds, that's a very typical question, Roger. Thank you for sending it in. Um, most of the time, most of our popular disc that we have in our company is our PS33. It is a paperback disc. Uh, come C and B weighted. Um, paper is more likely to tear than cloth but it is more affordable but it's very popular our discs are meant paperback discs are meant to be used flat on a flat surface they're not meant to be used at an angle or doing a lot of edge work like the side of this table so a lot of shops uh, cabinet shops um, wood shops like that they like to take their sanders and they want to bend them put them at an angle like a 30 degree angle and start working uh, corners and edges like that. What that's going to do is going to start tearing your disc. Right. Now, uh, we don't recommend that, but it's going to happen out there. That's what everybody does. But um, we offer a different type of disc. You want a, a different backing on your disc that's going to hold up that kind of aggression or that kind of uh, use um, for corners and edge work. What we usually recommend is a latex back or a film back product. They are going to be stronger than paper but not quite as strong as cloth, but they're still going to be in that same price range, right. affordable for everyday users. Um, our latex and our, our latex is our VP73, and we have a, two options for film back disc, our FP73 and our FP77, our green tech. So that is a very great disc that uh, helps fight loading when you're working like that. So if you find yourself around your shop or your workers or things, and you're tearing a lot of discs, Maybe we need to get a different type of backing. Don't just throw the disc away and say, oh, these are, yeah. these are no good, these aren't working. You need to find a better disc to find that for your uh, application. So tearing disc, let's look at a different, stronger type of backing. So yeah. it's a simple fix. Yes. But um, another one for you here, Landon. Uh, what kind of material do you have on a CMT for specific applications? Take okay, so that. specifically yeah, we touched... Um, so if you're just working on general steel or tool steel, hot, cold rolled steel, any of that, mm -hmm. just your standard zirconia would probably be fine. So at that point, it'd just be whether you want an angle or a flat, or a flat flap disc, um, and that would work. So the only time you'd probably want to change the grain or what's on it would be 
uh, soft metal or stainless steel, which we kind of touched on. So at that point, if you're working on one of those heat sensitive metals, just be sure you, you do have um, a lubricated disc just to keep the temperature down mm -hmm. about 20% or so. So, okay. I got another one for you, Landon. Um, uh, Chase wants to know, um, what is the max RPM for this product? Because a lot of our products do have uh, maximum RPMs or recommended RPMs for the type of tool they're on. Right. So um, really it's what the backing plate and this is recommended and that's going to be about 12,000 just over 12,000 is what they're rated so that's perfect because if you look at any angle grinder um, mm -hmm. that rpm is going to be right there as well and so this one's 11,000 so this fits right in the middle so go. most angle grinders will be anywhere from 10,000 to 12,000 rpms okay. these discs are rated for just over 12 so unless you find the rare grinder that will go above that all these discs will be will be fine to use on trying to find the unicorn absolutely <laughs> All right, another one for you, Luke, sent in. It says, my fab shop has a 12-inch radial sander that uses sticky back discs. Okay. Uh, what kind of disc do you suggest for me? Okay. Uh, fab shop, um, usually uh, you find these a lot in uh, the metal shops, like that fab shop. A, these radial sanders, everybody's seen, um, you've seen them and you probably don't know the name of them. Um, big sanders, uh, big circle disc on them that just goes up, you're, you're doing everything vertically. Usually they're paired up with big belt sanders. You get a belt sander, radial sander combo. So we get a lot of our uh, reps in the field that are buying belts and discs. Uh, those discs are just regular pressure sensitive adhesive disc, PSA. They just stick on there and that's the way they go. When you get done with them, you pull them off. These big 12 inch radial ones, what we recommend, we were talking about backings before. You don't want to really put a paperback disc on one of those sanders. Because especially if you're using metal, they are found in wood shops as well. You're going to be a little more aggressive. You're presenting that workpiece to that radial sander, and you're putting some uh, a lot of tension, a lot of pressure on those discs. If you have something that's paper, again, probably going to rip, probably going to tear. Ripping and tearing discs uh, seems to be a theme with these questions today. <laughs> but um, for most metal shops, we recommend a cloth. We For all these radial sanders, anything really over 8 inches is probably going to be used with some aggression. And uh, we guarantee that you're using some cloth, you're going to get some better, uh, they're going to hold up longer. So for metal shops, uh, a 411, a Zerk, uh, it's an unlubricated, or we have a 409 that is lubricated. Both come with, uh, are coated with PSA. Stick them on there, that's fine. For most wood shops, um, we got a 311 that's coated. That'll work really good. Uh, both cool. cloth. All of these have in common is they're cloth, polyester. They're going to hold up to that kind of aggression. And... Uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna guarantee them if they do rip. So, right. so always cloth, always never cloth. paper. Over over eight inches, that's really the rule we go by. Over eight inches, go with cloth. Yeah, perfect. Uh, another one for you. We've got a uh, uh, Pete sent this one in. How do I get a replacement backing plate? And do I need to buy replacement backing plates every time I order CMTs? Okay, so you won't need to get them. Every time you purchase, the good news is they're a, a die, die cast material. Okay. So they're really durable metal. So unless you're really just mistreating them or something random, like they get, they get ran over or something, that would crack them. But unless that happens, you'll be fine. So um, depending on how many setups you have, you wouldn't need, but maybe one or two, a couple a year if you use it every day. So it's again, it's just metal. So unless it's mistreated, um, you wouldn't have any issues. So how to go about it. We do have an item number set up for it. So you could either call into a, uh, our technical department, which is technical at clinksport.com, um, or you could reach out to our customer service department and they can get you um, these as well. And they're not sold with the disc. So if you get a pack of discs, mm -hmm. you will need to buy the backing plate separate. It does okay. have a, it is a separate item number. So gotcha. Gotcha. that's a good question. I think we also offer a wrench for it too. We do. Yeah. So you can buy a wrench separate and it's just pretty much standard. Mm -hmm. You might have some around your shop depending, but um, it's just a standard wrench. It does unlock um, the locking nuts on any grinder. So. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, last one for you, Luke, that was sent in. It is, what is new in the world of sandpaper? World of sandpaper. Um, here at Klingspor, uh, in the world of sandpaper, uh, we don't get a lot of major steps or major advancements, but we do have, for us, we have a new ceramic material. Um, we've always carried the, uh, the 910. It's a lubricated ceramic. We have now the 920 that came in and replaced it. Um, the 920, uh, available in uh, the same amount of grits as the 910. Uh, I believe it's uh, 36 all the way to 80. Mm -hmm. um, 
It is lubricated. Uh, we were talking about lubricated uh, products here. It's going to help reduce that temperature. That ceramic is very popular in the metal industry as well with aluminum and stainless. Um, if you need to get your, if you want to get your hands on these and try them, a lot of belts, um, a lot of, uh, I think we're going to start incorporating that in some of our smaller quick change applications, our, C, our QDCs mm -hmm. and things like that, but not yet, but uh, it is available for belts and, and those applications. Again, if you get a hold of your sales reps or call into our customer service department, we can get that in your hands. But with Clingspore, we have a new ceramic grain. The grain on it is supposed to hold up a lot better, a lot longer, longer lasting, hold up a better. And it's uh, very, it's uh, again, that strong backing that we talked about with everything right. else. It's that Y, Y, X backing cloth going to hold up for you. But, and waterproof. Yeah. And waterproof. Absolutely. Um, last question for you. Uh, we have, uh, we are a big fan of your flap discs, but my people are using a small section of the disc, then throwing them away. We are wasting a lot of material, but I cannot get them, get them to use the whole product. Would this be a good alternative product for them? This is from uh, DT Mike and the boys. This is a whole shop right here. <laughs> All right, so um, it would be a savings in terms of cost. Um, so you'd be, I guess, throwing away less that's not used up, essentially. Uh, so the, the easiest thing to do would kind of just be adjust um, how they're using it. Um, mm -hmm. We do have videos showing these kind of things as well. Um, but I guess just from a saving standpoint, yeah, the the cheaper disc would be better to use in a situation like that. Okay, gotcha. I mean, that's a good uh, good questions. Keep the questions coming, everybody. Um, send them in to Tech Talk at Clingsport.com, and we will get to them eventually, if not right away. I don't think we had anybody uh, send them in. Uh, again, if you're viewing this live through any kind of platform, YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook. Try to get them in the comments section. We might be able to get them on the show immediately. If you've, uh, we have some uh, loyal viewers out there that are watching every week. If you if you've got them, tune in uh, next time. Our next show. This is write this down on your calendar. Uh, our next show. Our shows are usually the first and third Wednesday of each month. We mm -hmm. are skipping December first. So our next show, uh, episode nine, is going to be on December eighth. Right. Because of the holiday, we've all got uh, juggling schedules and things like that. We're going to December 8th. That's going to be episode 9. And uh, Mr. Nick in our tech department is going to be talking saw blades. Saw blades. The wood guy is going to talk about how to cut the cheese right there. So, um, again, send your questions in. And thank you for viewing. I'm Luke. And I'm Landon. See you next time.